Welcome to ADI TV. In this tutorial I'll be continuing with the Top Trumps project. We'll be looking to change the text, which is down here, and the text, um, which is part of the template from Illustrator, which is this bit of text here. So first of all I'm going to change the text. So in my layers palette, which is up here, I'm going to lock the uh, image layer, which has got the Photoshop image, um, just in case I don't, uh, so I don't accidentally move it, and I'm going to unlock the text. I'm going to go ahead and go to my text tool, which is in my tools palette. And this allows me to select the text. So the total of numbers should always add up to 60. Um, so however you want to add these up. So I'm going to go ahead and change the first one to 10. Second one, 8. I'm going to assume that um, that all is a it's dual honors or combined honors. The next one's 12. Nine. I'll just hit and return after each one. And 11. And 10. If you add those numbers up, that will come to a total of 60. Now it could be, um, if you're not a combined honors student, what you do is you'd put in N-A for not applicable and then change the relevant numbers, but it still adds up to um, it still adds up to 60, so 12, 12. Okay, and so you're free to kind of change those numbers as much as you want, but they've got to add up to 60, and that's the important thing to remember. Okay, so um, I've done that, that's pretty self-explanatory. Self if I wanted to change fonts and stuff, I could, for this project, we keep it all as Helvetica, but if you were looking to change font, then obviously you've got access to fonts there. You also, there's a, there's a kind of a character palette, which is over here. And if I open that up, um, we've got the font, the weight, um, the size of the uh, letters, the point size. We've got the leading and also the kerning, which is the space between the letters. Leading is the space between each line um, vertically. Okay, so anyway, um, that's some stuff, it's a kind of vague introduction to the text palette. Let's put that back. Okay, so I'm going to need to change this text up here now to, the, to your relevant name. So I can't actually select that text, and you can see that as I put my cursor over it. There's no selection possible. So that's because it's actually on the original template. So what I'm going to do is go into my link files. If I go to my tools again, and hit the linked you can also find that in here in links. You'll see that all the linked files that I've got in this InDesign document currently, so I've got my Illustrator template and I've also got the PSD. Well, actually, I want to change the Illustrator template. So I'm going to click on that and I could control click or right click and I can go edit original. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that's going to open up the original template in Illustrator. Give it a few seconds. Okay, brilliant. So here we go. We've got the Illustrator document open. So I'm going to zoom that out. So you'll see um, there again, um, just like InDesign and Photoshop, you've got your palettes this side, contextual menu, and your tools. Slightly different color. The interface is a slightly darker gray, um, and you're free, depending on how you got it set up, it could be lighter or darker. It's actually um, it's a setting you can set. Got my background layer and a couple of other layers. So really, all I want to do is just select the text. So there again, with the uh, just the selection tool, I can select the text. Go to my text tool and just double click on it and type in down, down. Great. So that's really simple. I've changed it. What I can do is just put save. Um, this is complaining that it's a different format, but that's fine for me. I can hit OK. And I can close that. Don't need to quit Illustrator, in fact, to leave it open. I'm just going to click on InDesign. I can either go down to my dock or I can just click on the background. And you'll notice that it's already updated in InDesign automatically for me. And, and that's really the power of working with the Creative Suite, is that things you do in InDesign can be 
being worked on by someone else or you can carry on working um, on a temporary file and then update it later and it will automatically update your InDesign uh, layout without having to redo or re-put in images. Really, really useful. So now next up, what I need to do is if I get rid of my guides, I'm going to press Apple colon, you can see that the image actually slightly steps out from where the card is. So I've created a mask, which is essentially this um, kind of cream area. I've created another layer in the Illustrator to go in there. So I'm going to turn the guides back on. That's going to help us. And I'm going to create a new layer in my Layers palette. It's going to be called Layer 4. I'm going to double click on that and I'm just going to change its name to Mask. Yeah, OK. And you also notice when I did that, let's do that again, double click. It's actually the color of the, of the layer is that you're able to change. I'm going to leave this on green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new frame across the whole of this card, which is going to be specifically for the mask. And I'm going to go File, Place. Just like we did with the Illustrator thing, with the Illust uh, Photoshop file. And I'm going to select the border mask, which is in our elements. OK. <clears throat> and that's actually put it in there already. So if I deselect quickly and just turn off the guides, you can see now the edge is nice and crisp. So it's cropped essentially, or it's hidden, the Photoshop image, which goes slightly underneath. So the card's looking pretty good. There's one last thing I want to kind of do, is I want to change the color. Um, I'm not particularly fond of this kind of mustard color, so I'm going to go ahead and change it. So how do we do that? Well, we do it exactly how we did it before. If I go to my links, which is my Illustrator template, and this time, instead of going control click, I'll just go to this top little options um, drop down and edit original. That's going to pull me back into Illustrator. Now if you look at my Illustrator um, layers, the background layer is the layer that's got colour. And If I toggle that, I've got a bunch of other layers, but you can see there's just one box that is um, that particular colour. So I'm going to select that. I could actually just select it like that, but actually I'm going to make sure it's selected in this uh, layers. And that's how I notice that it's selected. That little circle gets highlighted. And now I'm free to kind of choose the color that I want to use. Now in the color palette, I've got my CMYK values. I could change those to RGB values if I wanted to, if I knew particularly what the RGB value was. But since we're print, we should stay with CMYK. Alternatively, I've got over here, I've got my, um, I've got my fill and my stroke. Now, if I double click on that, up comes a color picker. And then I've got access to CMYK, RGB, HSB, and the different various different ways. I mean, I could even just pick a color. So just do that again. Double click on that. I'm going to go ahead and type in the values. So the C value is 73 73.54. And 47.73. I'm obviously reading this off something else, so just give me a second. 16.97. And last but not least, 2.45. And that's going to give us kind of a mid blue. I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to change the color of that card. I'm happy with that. I'm going to hit save. Um, I'm going to hit OK again. And shut that down. And now when I click into InDesign, it automatically changes the color to blue. And that brings us pretty much to the end of fiddling around with the file. All I'm left to do is now is to hit save. And in the next part, I'll be showing you how to export as a PDF. The School of Arts and Digital Industries at the University of East London.